Hello and welcome to Matthew's Military Moments. This is the first part of a two-part series about the British soldier in World War I. Today I will be talking to you about the British soldier of 1914. This impression is based off what is detailed in the field service pocket which was issued to officers at the start of the Great War. It details everything that the soldier would wear or carry on his person. Action. To begin with, the uniform. I am dressed as a private soldier from the 2nd Battalion, the Dumb Light Infantry, as he will have been seen at the outbreak of the Great War. On my head, I am wearing the general service cap with a duck-billed peak and the DLI cap badge. On my torso, I am wearing the 1902 service dress tunic. It is made of khaki serge wool, which means it's hard wearing, like the trousers. It also has general service pattern buttons, which are made of brass and have the royal coat of arms on them. On both shoulders, I have regimental insignia, which are also made out of brass. Although the trousers were incredibly hard wearing, the soldiers still wore six foot long putties around their legs to keep the trousers neat and tidy on the inside and also protect the ends to stop them from getting caught or ripped. Finally, on my feet, I am wearing brown, not black, as is commonly thought. I am wearing brown boots. Finally, I should add that before mobilisation, the soldier was ordered not to polish any of his brass buttons or shoulder insignia so that he could camouflage in to the ground and the surroundings along with his uniform and his boots. Turning now to the webbing and equipment. To begin with, the valise. In here, the soldier carried his spare clothing and extras that weren't around the rest of his person. To begin with, the traditional D-shaped mess tin. Next, we have the soldier's hold all. In the hold all, the soldier had spare laces, a comb, his toothbrush, shaving brush, his razor, soap, tooth powder and his shaving stick. Next, the soldier's face cloth, his sewing kit, his dubbin and brush for his boots and towel and then his warm kit which was socks, a cap comforter which many may recognise as the World War II commando hat, gloves, and a woolen cardigan. The final item from the valise is the great coat. It was heavy and has the same regimental insignia and buttons as the jacket. It also has rifle patches across both shoulders as well as on the uniform to stop wear and tear from the butt of the rifle. There are a few other items that need mentioning. Firstly, the soldier's service and pay book carried in the right breast pocket here and shown here. Then, further down in this pocket on the inside here, the soldier carried a serrette of iodine and his first field dressing. The soldier may also carry with him some loose change in one of his pockets here or here, an army issue green handkerchief or his clasp knife with marlin spike, blade and tin opener worn around the waist with this lanyard. Moving on to rations. In the water bottle shown here, the soldier would have two pints of water. Then in his haversack, he would carry his knife, fork and spoon here and would have a white bag with his Bread, cheese, his biscuits, dried meat cubes, carrots, his tea and sugar, and finally salt. The soldier would also carry in his haversack his mug and his meat preserved or bullied beef, matches in a tin with striker on the bottom, 
his pipe and tobacco, and his pipe knife. Moving on to weapons and equipment. To begin with, the entrenching tool. The entrenching tool is made up of two parts, the helve here and the head. They slot together like so, and it has a shovel end and a pick end. This is the short magazine in the Enfield rifle. It was bolt action and it had a magazine of 10 rounds. The ramp sight here would go up to 2,000 yards and the soldier was trained to fire a volley fire at 2,000 yards, but the soldier was trained to fire up to 1,000 yards. In the butt here, the soldier would carry his oil bottle and his pull through for his rifle. To the top of the rifle, the soldier could attach his bayonet. It was designed to be long to kill cavalrymen as they were still a threat at this time. Next, the rifle's ammunition, carried in clips of five in these small pouches here, and there were 75 rounds in total on each side. That was a total of 150 rounds per soldier, which weighed nine pounds, and I can tell you that it is very heavy. Now that you've seen the contents, I'll tell you how much it weighed. It weighed around 62 pounds and it was very heavy. Trust me, I'm wearing it now. Look out for the next instalment of Matthew's Military Moments where we'll be covering the uniform and equipment changes from 1915 to 1918. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.